Shalom and praise the Lord. Welcome to JCC TV, the station that brings you the uncompromised gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Lucy Munro and I am so excited that you have joined us today. It is the festive season. It is the time that we are celebrating or marking or celebrating the day that we have put that marks uh, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have so much that we have prepared for you. We have come to the end of the year and it has been amazing for me. I don't know how it has been for you. You can tell us how it has been by talking to us through our social media platforms at JCC TV and I am at Lucy Flora Monroe. Or you can give us a call on 08000000898 or drop us a text message or two. Three three seven eight. You can just call us and say hi, find out how we are doing, and then we'll find out how you're doing. Then we'll be happy. <laughs> and on this episode, I am joined by an amazing, a beautiful woman of a God who is going to introduce herself. Karim Pusana. Thank you so much, Lucy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Pastor Laura Gedenji. Mm -hmm. Um. I am from Kenya, but I live in the United States in a place called Minnesota, mm -hmm. it's, uh, in North America. And yeah, I'm blessed to be here. Amen. Yeah. And you are also the uh, pastor, JCC Twin Cities. Yes, mm -hmm. I am the lead pastor of JCC Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. And I have the assignment of overseeing the JCC in North America. Mm -hmm. So grateful oh. for that. Yeah. There are several centers there. They are, and we are trusting God for more. Mm -hmm. yeah. How is it like doing ministry in the U.S.? That's an interesting question. Um, it's different. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. But the Lord is with us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's different because um, the, the, the environment there is not like here, mm -hmm. where you can talk about your faith openly. In America, you can talk about your faith openly. Uh, so you tend, it, it, it's a lot of people tend to keep it to themselves. Uh, so you can be working with a Christian and you don't know because people are not very open about their faith. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we believe it's a fertile ground. Mm -hmm. God is doing a new thing in America Amen. and we are part of it. Amen. Yeah. Had you done ministry here before, before you uh, moved there? Uh, yes but not formally. Mm -hmm. I moved to the U.S. right after high school. Okay. Uh, that's many years ago. Yeah. Um, so the ministry I had done in Kenya was through our youth group, mm -hmm. youth rallies. Mm -hmm. I, I used to preach uh, mm -hmm. a lot in our local church. Uh, I was the Christian Union chair lady then mm -hmm. in uh -huh. our school. Yeah. So yeah, I think I did ministry here. Mm -hmm. Then I never thought about it as a big deal okay. or as a pastoral role. It's later I think about it. I think I was actually a pastor in high school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I didn't ever thought much about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mark 3.27 says, No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man yeah. and then he will plunder his house. Right. Um, territorial, um, taking territories. Yeah. And uh, you've talked about how the Lord is doing... Um, something new in the u.s and you are part of it yeah how are you part of it and how are you binding the strong man in that territory how are we binding the strong man and how are we part of it quite interesting question and also um a progressive it's a progressive process um i was just telling somebody that us going to the u.s the lord opening uh, a door for us who are of faith us who are filled with the Holy Spirit to go to the, to the U.S. is the beginning part of revival in America. Mm -hmm. The Lord revealed to me a while back that um, we are not in the U.S. to work, you know, or to go to school. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, for me, I went to U.S. to go to school and I had these big dreams, which are good yeah. and they are all fulfilled and some are still mm -hmm. being fulfilled. But the biggest thing is to realize that uh, God has called us to be instrument of revival um, in America. So how we are taking the territory. You know, sometimes God will call you 
even before you know he has called you. Yeah, <laughs> true. So I, true. I believe the first step mm -hmm. of uh, uh, taking the territory is trusting in him mm -hmm. and also staying in prayer mm -hmm. because territories are not easy to conquer. Yeah. I think of Joshua, mm -hmm. uh, the instructions that God gave Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 after Moses had died, um, when he told him, my servant Moses is dead, mm -hmm. now arise because I'm going to use you uh, to take my people to the land that I promised to them. Mm -hmm. And that's where we find God saying that he will, uh, he will actually divide the territories for them. But he told him a very profound word, which I believe is uh, what we need to do. I'm not sure if we are mm -hmm. as strong as Joshua, <laughs> but he, he told him, be strong and very courageous. And to me, that's the beginning part of taking territory. Uh, how is our strength expressed? Because it's not muscles, yeah. it is through prayer. Mm. It is just, uh, I believe we conquer the cities or the territories, first of all, on our knees. There is nothing physical we can do because the battle is not carnal, mm. it's spiritual. It starts, first of all, with prayer. Mm -hmm. So we are praying and trusting the Lord mm -hmm. and also doing the work. Amen, yeah. amen, amen. Yeah. Um, when it comes to leadership mm -hmm. and um, looking at the Bible, who as a leader do you emulate? Who as a leader do I emulate? Mm. Oh my goodness, that's a good question because I really admire so many characters mm. uh, in the Bible. And I feel like I go with seasons. Okay. So maybe I will tell you my, my recent character of the Bible that I'm looking and studying about is Nehemiah. Um, mm. Nehemiah who God called to rebuild the wall mm -hmm. and into an area that he knew about, mm -hmm. but he had never been there. Yeah. So currently I would say for 2023, mm -hmm. <laughs> my character is Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. And how he rebuilt the wall and how he built a structure, mm -hmm. how he, he was able to confront what looked impossible. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why currently I'm in love with Nehemiah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And the word for JCC uh, for this year was, um, it was a year, it has been a year of abundance of grace yes. and um, seeking the knowledge of Christ. What is it about Christ that, or what new revelation have you gotten about Christ in this year? The, the simplicity mm -hmm. of his, his word and himself. Okay. I've really thought about that recently, mm -hmm. that Christ was a simple person mm -hmm. and what he spoke and what he did mm -hmm. actually was not complicated. Mm -hmm. And I, felt, I feel like focusing on that aspect of Christ has really helped me this year as mm -hmm. I go through so many things in ministry and in life mm -hmm. to really ground me. Mm -hmm. I find myself asking, I, I find you know, myself asking, would have Christ done that? Would he have said that? You know, there are so many things that Jesus did, but there are so many things that never bothered him because he rested in the Father. Mm -hmm. And even when it comes to like preaching, Jesus never went for the complicated yeah. messages. Yeah. He, just, he just spoke as it was, mm -hmm. two, three words, but they, were, they had power. Mm -hmm. I love that about him. Mm -hmm. I remind myself about him that, and even when I, it comes to ministry and doing his work, because he's the chief captain yeah. of our work. Mm. Thinking about it, his, his messages were very simple. Yeah. They were just related to yeah. whatever was happening yeah. around. Yeah. And pointing the people to the Father. Mm. I've thought about that because of how complicated the gospel that sometimes I listen to people and I'm lost in the process <laughs> of listening. And I'm reminding myself, that's not how Jesus spoke. And it's a place of, uh, of um, I keep on going back there as a guidance that it's what he did, not what other people are doing first. Yeah. Mm. That's very, 
thought provoking <laughs> because sometimes right now you listen to um so so many messages and men and women of god and having social media where right. everyone can just put anything for yeah. anyone yeah and you listen to people and you're like yes yeah you see the people saying amen down there and you're yeah. like yeah and you know who i know marie think about uh-huh. that person who is searching mm. when we live in such a a complex you know time i always think of that person yeah. who is sitting at the street blind crying out yeah. jesus son of david have mercy on me but so complicated mm. that he is not able to pass through mm. Mm. so i think of how that is a hindrance yeah. to the people who we are called to mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that brings in um the aspect of the holy spirit mm-hmm. and discernment. Mm-hmm. How can a new believer mm-hmm. or just someone that is really seeking and they're really desperate and thirsty for Christ mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. that this is the right person to listen to. This is the right gospel that I should listen to because again um we have so many doctrines. Yeah. We have people are just doing crazy things crazy out things. here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. How does one know that this is the right thing to follow? Mentorship, mm-hmm. guidance, counsel, mm-hmm. local church. I think you see salvation is personal. That's why you hear people say the Lord is my personal savior, but the growth of a believer is not personal. God intended that it happens in a fellowship of the brethren. Um so it's in the fellowship of the brethren then you would get to know the the right place to be the right doctrine the challenge and i think you mentioned that is the challenge of our time is social media there are people who just uh get born again and they sit on the couch especially the covid era <laughs> yes <laughs> the online church was just <laughs> you see yeah oh my church is in my house in mm-hmm. my pajama mm-hmm. and what a deception what a deception mm-hmm. because there is a lot we know there is a lot we we learn when we are part of a local church mm-hmm. so how can somebody know then i i believe the number one step of a new believer uh is to be plugged in into a fellowship is to be plugged in into a local church and God in his own wisdom has put capabilities within a local church as long as a local church or a fellowship is grounded in Christ mm-hmm. uh to be able to raise new believers because mm-hmm. that's the mandate sure. of, of, of the church mm-hmm. yeah so do not forsake their right. assembling together amen mm-hmm. mm mm-hmm. So for the new believers I uh, look for um a Bible teaching church and a Bible believing church. Right. And um because uh, I I think when uh, for example a lot of people who get born again through um crusades or witnessing or just uh, door to door evangelism mm-hmm. and maybe there is no follow up or yeah you just uh, sema bwana yesu nimekuja kwako and then you end it there so um, as a church also what should we do to make sure that this harvest is going to church right you said the word follow up mm. <laughs> you know yeah. and it, it makes me uh, it gives me goosebumps because of how often we don't do that it's, it's I, i i think of it as giving birth Yeah. yeah and <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. and living that abandoning that child mm-hmm. and you know sometimes it's not just in the crusade it's also in the church mm-hmm. where people get born again but we don't follow them up i think if there's a, a, a department that needs to be strengthened is the department of follow up the 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 somebody who said if the harvest is ready and we are not ready we lose the crop and the harvest is is ready the mm-hmm. bible says the harvest is much yeah. 
but we are not ready to, mm. to receive it. Because readinesses are those structures we put in place. Mm. One of them is follower, mm. you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about vision. And uh, the vision of this ministry is to preach the gospel of our Lord to every nation, yes. to establish training centers in every continent, yes. and to plant churches in every city of the world. Mm -hmm. And you are in one of the cities, like thinking about where the headquarter is and where you are. Yeah. You are um, in the fulfillment of this vision. How does that make you, um, or what weight does that give you? Um. I don't know. It's it's. I don't know if it's weight, mm -hmm. and I don't know if I can call it fulfillment mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in, in a in a in a window of opportunity of this vision, mm -hmm. um, I think it makes me want to trust the Lord more. The reason why it feels like a mountain. Mm -hmm. It feels like a mountain uh, that requires a lot of faith. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe the Lord will, will do it. Mm -hmm. I, it's amazing you ask that because I'm sensing that the time to begin to do that right now, right this time is the season for, for us to go into different states. We call them states mm -hmm. um, with, with the vision of JCC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when it comes to placement of um, where your assignment is, where your vision is, yeah. you know, where you, you just don't, um, you don't just go do ministry anywhere just because um, you felt like it or yeah. you have an area of your assignment. Right. Um, for example, how do I know that um, I am called um, to go do ministry in Iraq and <laughs> not, uh, <laughs> and not where? Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. How do I not go to Nigeria and yet my assignment is in Iraq? That's a very interesting question, uh, which comes back to trusting the Lord. Mm. You know, one thing I like to remind myself, uh, Psalms 32 verse 8, the Bible says, I will instruct you and I will guide you and I will teach you the way you should go. Mm. And sometimes we are waiting for that voice to say, that says the Lord, <laughs> yeah. book the, a flight. <laughs> Hello. Hello, you know? <laughs> yeah. And and yet it's incredible to know that God does not work like that. God is a God who orchestrates every step um, for his good and for his glory. Mm. Uh, I, I When I think about myself when I was going to U.S., I wasn't going to fulfill an assignment <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. I was going to school in my understanding. Mm. And uh, I remember my parents had worked very hard. Um, th those days when a lot of young people, right after high school, mm. uh, we were going to college and everybody had a dream that their child go to US. Mm. So. You're not going to U.S. with a vision to, for ministry. But you see, our God, who is so faithful and he's able to see what we cannot see, yeah. knew that. So every step of the way, he's guiding and orchestrating mm. so that we can get to where we need to be. Mm. And when we know that, I think we rest, daily trusting the Lord, mm. uh, that all things are working together for our good, and He is guiding us to where we need to be. Mm. Um, I feel like it can be a point of anxiety if we brought our human mm. logical thinking, or oh, where do I need to do ministry? Well, what do I need to be doing? You know what? It's the Lord guiding us. It's the Lord holding our hands and you look, you're like, oh, you look back, yeah. you're like, okay, this is what the Lord needed me to do. Mm. So I think it all comes down to continually aligning ourselves with the will of God. Mm -hmm. um, because he's the one who 
orchestrates all things mm -hmm. and also he understands the seasons and mm -hmm. he understands the timing um, mm -hmm. that's what i can say mm -hmm. i feel like it, it's so big yeah it's so grander to begin to think uh okay i should go to the u.s and i mean like the, if that was the initial thought I don't even think it would have been possible. Mm. Uh, so many things, and also where I was in life then, it would have been off. Mm. But you see, God had a way to allure yeah. me into the vision, into the will mm -hmm. that he had for me. Mm -hmm. And I believe God is continually doing that, that to each one of us. Mm -hmm. um, that means you can be in a place and you don't even think, you're not thinking much yeah. about it. But God is using that time and that moment mm -hmm. uh, to guide you into the place that he wants you to be. Yeah. yeah. And I think it takes a lot to give up control because um, you had gone there for school. Yeah. Then the God just changes everything. Yeah. And you have to um, give up that control yeah. that you had, you had planned. Yeah. That I'm going to school, yeah. I'm going to get a job, yeah. I am going to one, two, three, four. Then yeah. here your plans are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. distracted, Kabisa, by God. Yeah. And you have to trust him that to trust him. he's going to actually do it. Yeah. And, and, and you know, God is a good father. Like when I think about it, God is a good father. And even the giving up of our control it's not like a snap. Yeah. It's not like one day you're going this direction and say, I, I, you turn right now, change. Mm -hmm. it's, it's God walking with you or with us mm -hmm. each step of the way, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. through seasons, through experiences, through pains, mm -hmm. through joys, you know, mm -hmm. through abundance, mm -hmm. through luck, all those seasons until mm. you find you have completely shifted. Yeah. Uh, because I believe if God is to show us, even now mm. as we sit here, yeah. what, what he's planning to do for us, I think we would be very shocked. Yeah. And some of us would run away from <laughs> God. <laughs> that's why, that's why so... all he tells us is, I know the plan I have for you. Mm. you th that's all we got to mm. take. I know the plan I have for you. Mm. The rest of the details, leave them. And leave trust them. that. Yeah. He knows the plan he has for us. Because the plans <laughs> might shock you. Right. You're like, hey, wait, wait, I'm not ready for this. Right. <laughs> and yeah. uh, speaking of Jesus, um, who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to me? That's a very deep question. Um, who is Jesus to me? A friend? Mm. Uh, everything. My savior. Mm my big brother, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my mm -hmm. redeemer, mm -hmm. um, the one who has changed my destiny, mm -hmm. the one that completely changed my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, I think of when I was born again, one of the things that really amazes me is the transformation of my heart that mm -hmm. happened when I got born again. I. I reflect on that and I am shocked because of who I was then, you know, as a young girl, yeah. as a teenager, but I can literally tell what happened when Jesus came into Something my life. Happened. Something changed. My heart was set on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, my love for him was just, what not was, is unexplainable. Uh, so he, Jesus is... It's the word, it's mm. that breath of God that really entered me and completely changed me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, we are in the season where um, of celebrating Christmas. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it's around the corner. It's around the <laughs> corner. And um, I, I believe um, sometimes we tend to forget the reason for the season. Yeah. That is Christ. Yeah. You know, for, I think in the US it is just Santa and Father Christmas and All everything. That, yeah. Um how do we go back to that understanding that it is a time that we are celebrating 
uh, the most precious gift or the just the most precious thing that was given to us. Yeah. Mm. How do we go back there? Yeah. I think as believers, really uh, getting it mm. and not taking it for granted that Jesus is the reason for the season. The reason why I say that is um, I think we assume everybody will know the reason for the season. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. For example, to our children, uh, you see in the US, like you said, I think you already know, <laughs> yeah. uh, Christmas is in a different level. Mm -hmm. uh, and a majority of people who some of them care nothing about God uh, celebrate Christmas and Jesus is completely removed from it. Mm -hmm. So as a mother, uh, I'm a mother of three children, uh, I realized I got to directly teach my children what Christmas is about. Mm -hmm. You know, at church, we got to directly talk about the difference between Christ, mm -hmm. who is the reason for the season, uh, and Santa. <laughs> and you know what is funny? <laughs> it is so funny because, <laughs> you, you see, the, the culture in America is very different. Mm. It's different because um, people have the right of their worship and what they believe. I, I believe it's like that in Kenya, but I think it's in a different level. Mm. So you will find that we know Santa is not real. Do you know Santa yeah. is not real? Mm -hmm. But there are people who want their children to believe Santa is real. And don't you ever tell your, my child that Santa is not real. So how do those children grow in the same environment? Yeah. You know, my son was telling me the, the other day, he was in the school bus and he looked, I think they were talking about um, Christmas. And he looked at his friend in the bus and he told him, Santa is not real. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and uh, this other child was shocked to hear that. So I think it's for us to take Christmas um, as a gospel moment. You know, Christmas is a gospel moment. It is a time to introduce the world to Christ, mm. you know. But apparently we don't. Mm -hmm. we, we are carried away by the mood of the, se the yeah. festivity of, yeah. the, of, the, of the season. Mm -hmm. um, there's a scripture in the Gospel of John, I think John chapter 1, verse 14. Uh, the Bible says that the Word became, became flesh, flesh and He yeah. dwelled among us and we beheld His glory. And when I think about Christmas, it's a time to behold the glory of God. Uh, when the Word becoming flesh and dwelling among us, but you see, it's been so diluted uh, mm -hmm. by us Christians, because yeah. we can't blame anybody, mm -hmm. uh, that we are not able to give that testimony of Christ, which is a perfect time. Christmas time would be a perfect time to give that testimony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I encourage myself that um, to start it where I am. Mm -hmm. My first place of ministry is my house, mm -hmm. my children who are growing and they are curious you know, is what is Christmas about? You know, is Santa real? You know, is mm -hmm. and then to other people that like the church and other children that I know, and then it goes from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, what is one core memory you have about Christmas? Which one is one as, core memory that oh you have my about goodness. Christmas? You know, my favorite Christmas moment. Uh, actually here in Kenya, we're here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, I love and I miss the Christmas time at, yeah. at our home. I don't have a particular one, but by the grace of God, we had many years 
of coming together for Christmas, cooking mm. uh, as an extended family. Mm. When I was growing up, we never celebrated Christmas as a nuclear family. So it was my like my, my dad uh, and their brother and all that, and my grandparents, we all came together. We ate mm. chomad, mm -hmm. you know, ate a lot of goat, yeah. got sick, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> recovered and mm. continued to eat. Yes. That joy, uh, and oh, also, um, what did we call overnight service? Kesha. Ah, uh, Kesha. Kesha. It wasn't called Kesha. It had mm -hmm. another name. Mm -hmm. The one you go to the to the church the the night of christmas it's a kesha right oh, yeah it's a kesha yeah it's a kesha <laughs> yeah so oh my goodness i miss those times mm -hmm. where at our local church i grew up in a mainstream church by the mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. and my grandma my late grandma uh and us would go and we could not wait to go to our local church and sing christmas carols mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> And, and also do presentations, mm -hmm. and sing, sing, the uh, sing, do the memory verses, yeah. do the songs, mm -hmm. uh, and then people go home after midnight and then the following day is Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that brings me to the essence of family. Mm -hmm. What is family? What is family? Oh my goodness. Family is the beginning point of everything. Um, the, the core place of every person is the the place where we are formed mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. to me family is everything mm -hmm. it's just the the beginning of ministry yeah yeah our first support system there's so much description to a to a family mm -hmm. yeah and how important is um the family unit we are seeing a lot of um families that are breaking, a yes. lot of separation, a lot of divorce, yes. a lot of violence. Yes. You know? Yeah. What is it that is happening really? I think it's people moving away from truth because family is in the heart of God. I I when we read the scripture, it's God who came up with the idea of family. Sure. And he said, a man will leave his mother and father and will be joined and, uh, with a woman and they will become one. Oh. And that's how a family uh, is. Mm -hmm. That's how a family starts. Mm -hmm. And when we continue reading the scripture, the Lord hates the, the breaking of, of a family bond. Why? It, he, he, the Lord understands the the breaking of the covenant completely messes up uh, the, the environment uh, where faith mm -hmm. is supposed to thrive. It's very difficult to raise children or even to, for an adult to thrive in, mm -hmm. a, in a broken family setup. Uh, it doesn't mean people don't uh, uh, come out of it by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. But the will of God is that each one of us uh, be attached to, to their family. Mm -hmm. the, and I think the devil knows that. Yeah. No wonder they attack. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. even in the conference, we are being reminded the devil won't attack that which is of no value. Sure. So the reason why we are seeing a lot of attacks, because the devil knows if he touches the families. For example, if he touches a couple, guess what happens? The, the life of the children are co is completely scattered. He knows he's, uh, he has destroyed that seed, not unless God redeems them. So uh, mm. family is important. There's a scripture, uh, is it in Acts chapter 2, when Peter preached the gospel and, uh, and uh, the Holy Spirit came, it's in Acts chapter 2, uh, and the Holy Spirit came down and people were filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then Peter began to minister and giving the testimony of Christ. The Bible says that people were touched by the word and they began to come to Peter asking him, what shall we do uh, to, be, um, to be saved? Mm -hmm. And he tells them, repent so that the time of refreshing may come. 
the following verse is profound because the Bible says, for the promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit mm. is for you and your children. So the Holy Spirit was not to come just to the individual. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit uh, or the family is a good context. It's a good environment. It's a good uh, atmosphere mm. for, for the fruits of the Holy Spirit, for the faith of everybody in that family to thrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we are born into the family of Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. How do we um, how do we accept to be in that family? Which family? The family of Christ. By we, being born again. Mm. By having a revelation. Um, and I think we touched on it earlier. Mm -hmm. That we are born again to be in the body. But it pleases God um, for us to be in unity. Mm. I, I think once we lose the... The, the perspective that God, God's intention for us is to be in the family, mm -hmm. you know? And you know, it's hard because it causes all of us to kind of deal with our own self <laughs> True. so that mm -hmm. we can belong. Yeah. And especially in our generation mm -hmm. that is getting more and more individualized yeah. you know before we were saying oh the western nations are so individualized mm. but then the world has become like a village mm. one village through technology mm. and social media where you can have a comp you can be in a company of so many people mm -hmm. in social circles and that you're alone you can Very just be alone. sitting on that chair mm. and you're alone and that is teaching us that I can be okay, but alone, but I'm with you, but I'm alone. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Which is such a deception. It is. Uh, and it's, 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 it's giving a false, um, it's giving a false, a false image of unity. Because mm -hmm. unity, uh, for example, think about it. Have you ever thought like people who have millions of followers, um, you hear people say, oh, I have, I have one million followers. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you've seen it. Like people are so yeah. proud, yeah. It's feeling so achieved. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine they have never met those people? Like, like they don't know mm -hmm. how they live, who they are. But there's this deception that we are close. We are connected. You know, we are, we are together. Mm -hmm. We are one. But we cannot be one without being together, you know, without sure. being connected. Mm -hmm. And I think that is greatly affecting or trickling down to family, where people don't feel the need of belonging and working on ourselves so that we can belong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I've realized it has to be intentional. It, it wouldn't just work. Like even the families that we come from, you realize even as we grow, you have to want, I don't know what your experience is, but you have to want It's true to be part of the family. Mm. Like yeah. there, are there are times you feel upset, yeah. even with your favorite sister, <laughs> the yes. closest sister, like the, the choice would be to ignore the choice, the, the easiest choice, I mean, mm. would be to ignore or I don't want anything to do with you. But then the work is to work on ourselves mm. through the grace of God and the help mm. of God mm. so that we can, mm. we can be together. Mm. You and know? just foster that unity. Yes. And where there is unity, yeah. God will command a blessing. Indeed. Mm. Indeed. Wow. Yeah. What was your experience um, moving to the um, States and leaving your family <laughs> here? That's a whole <laughs> another program. But <laughs> <laughs> Lord help me. Oh my goodness, it was tough. It was very tough. Mm -hmm. But thank God I'm here today. Mm -hmm. It was tough because, first of all, I was very young. I had just left high school. 
uh, all my life I had grown up in my my village yeah. with, with my family, uh, very close family, loving family. We didn't have everything, but we, we were just fine. Mm -hmm. um, then went to high school, you know, and high school. Had a very good experience in my high school years. Mm -hmm. I loved my high school. <laughs> um, and then, so there was community there. Yeah. The four years that you, mm -hmm. I, I was in high school, there was community, there was things going on. I was a leader there. Mm -hmm. And then graduate and boom. Off you go. Off I go. Mm -hmm. The interesting part is nobody prepares you for that. Or nobody. Mm -hmm. At least maybe now things are better. Mm -hmm. Nobody then prepared us for that. All you cared about is you got a visa, you got an I-20, mm -hmm. which is the the, the the admission letter they give you to a university in the U.S. and get an I-20, go to the embassy, get a visa. We never even thought about money yeah. that you're going to use to go to pay the college because America <laughs> has a lot of money. Yeah, I count. <laughs> it grows on the trees. Yeah. But nobody prepared, prepares you or prepared us for the crisis, the separation crisis that uh, would come because f for example for me I left my family and went alone I remember going up the escalator at the airport you know those days people used to be escorted with a matatu yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. they were like they were like three three or four matatus from my village because people were so excited yeah. that I was going mm -hmm. and I remember I still have the mental image today because at Jomo Kenyatta then there was an escalator. Somewhere you, you stood, like the people who had mm -hmm. escorted you, they stood and you would go up the escalator. That was my first time ever. <laughs> On an escalator. <laughs> On an escalator. <laughs> and I remember the more I went up, the more I could see my mother waving oh, at me. And that was it. And it felt like you went into a different place, got in the plane, and off I went. And you get to a land where everything is different. It, how you talk is different. How you look is different. Um, how you dress is different. Um, everything is different. Mm -hmm. The food is different. The weather is different. I remember when I got to the airport, to the Minneapolis airport, and I had some challenges there. And I remember getting out of the airport and finding a lot of women smoking. And I felt like, where did I just come? You know, because in my life, I had never seen a woman smoke. <laughs> mm -hmm. So from there, I started a journey of really, really, uh, adjusting in a way that nobody prepares you, mm -hmm. nobody to talk to. You know, you know, the, there's nobody to talk to. There's nobody. I was talking to the young, uh, to a young woman who came to visit me in my house right before I left, and she had come from college, and I saw her, and I remembered me, and I gave her a big hug because I remembered how that those days nobody was there to tell you it's gonna be okay. Mm. It's gonna be okay. Mm. Uh, so when we went, we went straight to school, to class. I remember I was one week late to go to the university mm. and I went one week late. I mean, I've never been in American university. When I'm looking for a visa here, I'm not thinking yes. school. I'm going to school, but really yeah. that's not, that's, you understand? Uh, and I remember going to class, and I will never forget my first class was Psychology 101. And I, I had my confidence up here. And I entered the class, and I couldn't hear a thing. The teacher was saying. And I raised my hand, because American English sounded completely different you know, than the English I knew here. And I remember the, the professor couldn't hear me, couldn't understand, you know, and I couldn't understand him. 
and that was the beginning of trouble. <laughs> oh, but by the grace of God, oh, God mm. is amazing. Mm. You know, when I think about my going to America, I thank God. One of the things I'm very, very grateful for is the grace to pray. The period that I, I was in Kenya, waiting for my visas to be, to be processed and all that, I really prayed. I don't know if you've ever, ever heard of Karura Forest. Yes. I was a Karura girl. I, was, I would go in, at Karura and stay for weeks and just pray and pray. But little did I know, even when I was praying, what was waiting for me. And those, I think the best way to describe those moments is wilderness, you know? The, the, the years of wilderness that were waiting for me, where like actually there's nobody to pray with. Mm-hmm. There's nobody to pray with, uh, there's nobody to really fellowship with. They were kind of mm-hmm. alone. Mm-hmm. Um, but God is faithful. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God is faithful. He took us through. Amen. He took me through. Amen. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm just um, thinking about someone that is watching us today. Yeah. And they are like, um, I have really prayed. Yeah. You know, and looking at you and um, you are living in an answered prayer. Mm-hmm. And someone is just watching and they're like, I have really prayed. Like, I have prayed. If it is prayer, I I'm have prayed. prayed yeah. But I'm not getting this breakthrough. I am not uh, getting these answers. I'm not getting these miracles that I have been praying for, yeah. that I have been having faith for. What can you tell them? Uh, you know, the Bible says men ought to pray and not to lose heart. Um, so... The, the, the truth remains that God answers prayer. It doesn't matter how long it takes. When I think about that woman who kept on going to the judge, that judge may, the judge may avenge for him, she, for her. She kept on going. She kept on not giving hope, giving up hope. So my encouragement is, if you have been praying, keep praying. That's the, that's the instruction mm-hmm. that the Bible has for us. If you, have, if you think you have been praying and you have prayed enough, keep praying. The Lord promises that he will answer our prayer. Do we know, what, know when? No, we don't. Do we know how? We don't. But the truth of the matter is he is faithful. The Lord is faithful. Oh, the Lord is faithful. He is. And he will not leave us. He will not forsake us. Mm. He's faithful. Because I cannot imagine a world without prayer. Yeah, I can't oh imagine just that place where you go and you cannot just you can't talk anymore. You yeah. can't. Yeah. You don't have words. You don't have know. words. Yeah. yeah. And you know what I've also learned. Many times, God answers, and we don't even know mm-hmm. that He has answered. Mm-hmm. We don't. We ask. And God performs, and we don't know he has answered. And it is until we have walked a few steps forward, and sometimes in frustration and in waiting Mm -hmm. and in questioning, that we look back and say, God, you answered. You answered. Maybe not necessarily exactly how we expected it. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, uh, Lucy, after many years of working with God, I am persuaded with no doubt God answers prayer. He does. And uh, our prayer makes a difference. Amen. That the worst thing we can do is not to pray. Yes. You know, Mm. the worst thing. The worst disservice, true. You know, yeah. <laughs> I think it's Joseph Scriven who said, you know, what a friend. He was actually not writing mm. a song. Mm. He was uh, writing a letter to his mother who was ill. And he said, in the letter, he said, what a friend we have in Jesus. You know, all our griefs to bear. And uh, what a privilege it is. Mm. Uh, to bring every everything to God in prayer, you know. Mm-hmm. And then he asks, what a peace we often forfeit 
and what a needless pain we bear. Simply because. Mm. <laughs> we, we choose to carry the burdens mm. ourselves. We choose, yeah, we choose, I can do this. Yeah, I can do this. Or, yeah. let me help you. Let me help you. Or, yeah. it's too much. It's too much to pray. You know, that's how the devil will, mm. will trick us. Like, it's too much. Or, I am too tired to pray. Um, and I like what uh, Papa has really mm -hmm. instilled in us, you know, to pray anyways. When things don't seem like they are working, pray, pray. <laughs> you know. Mm. When, uh, when you don't feel like praying, pray, pray. you know. Actually, mm. when you don't feel like praying, mm. that's the best time to mm. pray. <laughs> it's true. When you don't feel true. like rising up to pray, mm -hmm. that's when to, to rise up and pray. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, I'll take you back a bit um, mm -hmm. about moving to a new place, mm -hmm. um, new culture, mm -hmm. new way of things, new, uh, new everything. Yeah. And in that environment, you have to still exercise your morals. You still have to be intentional about the home training that you have. Yeah. How do you maintain that uh, that discipline of I am in a foreign land I can it's a new place I can easily be um, absorbed in yeah. this new culture in yeah. this new way of things but you choose yeah your morals mm -hmm. and um, what you were taught back at home yeah mm -hmm. that is hard in fact that is um, and I'm just open mm -hmm. about it that is the downfall of so many people um, because a lot of people move abroad with good intentions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think very few people think of it like, oh, I can do whatever I want I'm by myself. Maybe there's a little bit of that. But what I see that challenges uh, or that threatens the moral our, our moral uh, values or capacities is mm. the pressure. You see, like in the US, mm. if a young woman or a young man comes to the US, the hands you fall into can either make you or break you. Mm. So they can help you be strong or they can help you lead you to a completely different direction. Mm. We have people who came sailed and today they are not serving the Lord. Simply because of who ever received it. It is, it that, is that serious. That simple. Yet that life changing. You know? Mm -hmm. That life changing. So, some Whoever receives you from the airport can can lead you to either standing or falling. But also mm. there are great testimonies yeah. because there are, there are people who've been deceived by believers. Mm. <laughs> you know, I have so many testimonies of people who tell me, you know, I didn't know the Lord, but the family that received me when I came, I found that they go to church. I started, I started going to church mm. and that's how I was born again. Mm. Actually, I have a, a pastor friend who had moved to the U.S. with their family. And when they arrived uh, in Minnesota, mm. the family that was waiting for them they, uh, belonged to a church. And then they came for them uh, with, a, with a few brethren from church. Mm. And the following, I think it was a couple Sundays after that, she got born again. Wow. And today she's a pastor. Mm. Uh, so it is hard, and yet it is God who keeps us. It is God who keeps it, us. The Lord, the Lord is also able to keep us mm. and sustain us. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, as we wind up, um, mm. I would just like you to look into that camera mm. and tell someone that has never heard about Jesus mm -hmm. or um, someone that um, has lost their way. Yeah someone that is like what are you guys talking about yeah introduce this man jesus to someone amen. on that camera amen uh 
You see, there is a void in every human heart. And that void, there is nobody and there is nothing that can fill it apart from God. Mm. If you're watching this show today, I want you to know that God loves you. It doesn't matter where you have been, where, what you have done, or how you feel like today. God loves you. And the, the love of God is at such a length and such a depth and such a height that he's able to reach you exactly where you are. The simple verse that we know, John 3, 16, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I want you to remind you today, no matter where you are, no matter where, what you're going through, God gave the best for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't feel like you are deserving anything. Maybe you feel like you are not good for anything. And maybe even people have told you, you are done. I am here reminding you today, God is not done with you. He gave his begotten son so that you can be born again. But also the Bible says that if you believe, you see, God loves us so much that he will not force you. You got to make a choice. He says, whosoever believes. So you, got a, you have a, a, a part to play. And that part is believing in God. It is like somebody handing you a gift. Yeah, this gift is given to you freely. And the fact is given to you freely. What happens to you is if you, what, what makes a difference is if you're going to accept it or reject it. It's the same thing with Christ. But the best choice, I have lived it. I say today that I've been in so many places. I've seen so many things. I have heard and I've also loved. I've been in best schools. I've seen great things. But the thing is, the best decision that I have ever made is falling in love with Jesus. I'm praying for you, and I ask that you make that decision. Commit your life to Christ. Trust him. Surrender to him. You see, you do not need to know how the future looks like. He is the one who is, guide, who is gonna guide you. The moment you commit your life to him, he is going to take you. He's going to take care of you. He's going to hold your hand because he is faithful. Shalom. Shalom. If you could just lead them to Christ, those that want to give their lives. Yes. Yeah, so if today you would like to make that decision, I want you to say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I give you my life to be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Receive me today. Write my name in the book of life. I surrender everything to you. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior from this day and forever. Amen. 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 And thank you so much, Pastor. You are welcome. And as we celebrate um, <laughs> this season, yes. what is your message to the people? What can you tell our viewer? Jesus is the reason for the season. Mm. And this reason is a reason that comes with glory. Mm. So uh, may the Lord, may the reason for the season you see, I don't know about here, mm -hmm. but in U.S., there's a lot of gifting. Uh, like mm -hmm. if you go to the stores, there's all kinds of gifts mm -hmm. uh, that, are, that are wrapped well. But Jesus is the gift that cannot be wrapped in a gift. Sure. In, mm -hmm. No paper can wrap Jesus. Mm -hmm. No box that can fit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, he, he cannot fit in any box. So may this season mm. uh, that's what i would pray for everybody mm. be a season of enjoying that gift amen no matter what you find yourself having whether you think you have much or less whether you think you are 
surrounded by family or not, mm. may Jesus be the center of everything that is happening. Amen. I like the scripture that I just quoted, mm. John 1 uh, verse 14. He said, and we beheld the glory. I pray that each and every person, each one of us, will behold the glory this season. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've had a lot of fun. I've learned a lot. Amen. And I hope that you too at home have learned something. Christ is the reason for this season. Gift someone. Yeah. The love of Christ. Gift. Don't keep Christ to yourself. Mm -hmm. Tell mm -hmm. someone about Jesus. Tell mm -hmm. someone about uh, why Jesus died. Why he gave up his life for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, be the reason someone gets that healing yeah. the reason someone gets that to experience that love that mm -hmm. is just cannot be put towards mm -hmm. my name is elisa wenda thank you so much for joining us and keep it jcc tv the station that brings you the uncompromised gospel of our lord jesus christ shalom <laughs>